Hi, and welcome to lesson 10. This lesson is on quantum recursive network architecture. This lesson is the conclusion of our, of our block of lessons about quantum networks. And here we're going to really think about how to connect different networks together into a global quantum internet. Let's begin with step one, uh, called scaling through recursion. So in this step, we want to know how we can actually expand and interconnect different networks together. And we're going to introduce the concept of recursion. Let's think about the obstacles we need to face when scaling up quantum internetworks. The main challenges are that we have to ensure interoperability between heterogeneous systems. All of these networks will run on different hardware, the repeaters will have different functionality, as well as the, the management of the networks will be quite different. Another challenge is the reconciliation of competing needs and policies of independent organizations. One such big need is the privacy. Different organizations, they want to communicate together, but they don't want to divulge all of their information about their networks that they're running. Next challenge is to pick correct approach to routing, naming, and resource discovery in the networks. And finally, we have to face the fact that networks are evolving dynamic systems. Therefore, we have to manage their dynamic behavior, such as out-of-date information, addition or removal of links, nodes, or entire quantum networks. Before we start to actually design our quantum internet, let's think about how the classical internet evolved. And the main point here is that it evolved in two-layer hierarchical structure. There are two types of routing protocols. There is the interior gateway protocols, or the IGPs. And these are protocols for exchange, exchanging routing tables um, within an autonomous system, an AS. For our purpose, it's really within a network. And as opposed to the interior one, there's the second one, the exterior gateway protocols, the EGPs. And these uh, exchange routing information between independent autonomous systems. So these are the guys that tell us how to route information between quantum networks. The advantage of this structure are the following. One, it leads to scalability. When we manage our network, we don't have to think about uh, all the other networks. All we have to do is think about our little network. That's taken care of by the IGPs. And the EGPs tell us how to move between the networks. So it's a lot more easy to manage scalability. Also, it's easy to manage autonomy. And lastly, uh, it guarantees privacy because the interior of a network is hidden from the outside. This is illustrated by the following picture. Here we've got three networks represented by AS1, AS2, and AS3. They are all connected, but from the outside, this is all we see. We don't know what's inside these clouds, what's inside these networks. Once we step into AS1, then we can see, yes, that there's uh, some routing nodes, some end nodes, and so on. But still, even from inside the AS1, we cannot see what's inside AS2 or even AS3. This is a nice, uh, simple picture, but the reality is far from being that simple. As technology evolved, things got complicated because of new different challenges and new different um, needs that had to be satisfied in, in networking. One was address translation for packets crossing a boundary. This is given by the network address translation, or NAT. Another one was networks on top of networks. We, we had to use IP over Ethernet, ATM, Sonnet, WLAN. And also, also there's virtual networks that include the concepts of tunnels, overlays, mobile IP, and IP over IP. So all of these new technologies address real technical necessities, but at the same time, they go against the original uniform scheme of addressing and routing in an internet network. One way out of this complicated picture is a recent proposal of re using of recursion, and in particularly the recursive approach to classical networking. Various layering schemes can be viewed as instances of a more general and flexible recursive architecture supporting arbitrary layering. 
And the main simple idea behind recursion in, in classical and quantum networks is that we can represent a subset of a network as a single node, but at a different layer of the network. This leads to some very nice, useful, and unifying concepts, such as virtualization, that can be useful in multi-hop forwarding and embedding of topologies, as well as software layering, which is common in network protocol stacks. So for now, we only introduce the basic idea of recursion. In the next step, we're going to look more closely what it means to use recursion in classical networks before jumping onto recursion in quantum networks.